If you have an iPad, there's a good chance you're not using it to its full potential. Regardless if you have the iPad mini, the Pro, or the Air, I'm most amazed on how many people I talk to who have an iPad but are unaware about these amazing features that it has. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and share with you a handful of my favorite features and tips and tricks that every iPad owner needs to know. And of course, timestamp to everything will be in the description down below for your pleasure. Let's quickly start off with number one, and that is each corner has a unique functionality. We should all be familiar, the top right will bring us control center, top left will take us to our lock screen, as well as our notifications, but lower left, if you do this, it will actually take a screenshot. And as an added bonus, if you use scribbles and we select like an ink marker and we use like red or something more obvious on the screen, if you doodle like a straight line and you hold it, it's automatically going to straight, a star, long hold, it'll create a star, square, square, long stick and hold it midway, it'll create like an arrow, a circle. And then if you need to take quick notes, a slide up right here will give you quick access to your notes, which you could use keyboard, make the keyboard smaller, enlarge it, and on some iPads, you can also split the keyboard in half as well. So those are four amazing corner features that each screen has to offer on basically any iPad. And then for your docs, nothing new here. You're always able to click and drag some of these icons and then like drop it in here if you want. And then click and drag them out to like remove them. And if you like to, you can create folders and also click and drag these folders right there to have quicker shortcuts to your folder apps. Nothing new here, but you can clean this out to be much more useful if you want to bookmark some more. You see, this one will automatically take us to our app library, which is kind of pointless because if we go all the way to our far right, we have our app library here anyways. So if you have less pages, that's not this one's not really necessary. And then these over here you see here are your recently used apps. Also not really necessary. You see, if we go into settings and go down into home screen and app library, you'll see a new dock setting right here. So you can disable the library. So now the library is gone. We now have a cleaner layout because again, we go to the far right to have access to our app library. But if you like to, you can also disable show suggestion, flat and recent apps and docs. So now your recent ones are gone. So now we have a cleaner, basically dock layout. And then when it comes to multitasking, if we open up Safari as an example, any app that you're using, if it's like a full screen app, when you tap on these little dots above here, this will allow you to quickly enter split view. And you can select the next app and you can have two apps side by side. You can also change the size ratio as well. And of course, if you like to add more, you could just click and drag the app from your dock, drop it in the middle, and you'll have this floating mobile version of the app on your screen. And if you like to remove it, you can just select it and slide it up like so. But if we're using something that supports it, like Safari as an example, if you tap these dots right here, you can create a new window right here. So now we actually created two desktops basically on Safari. And you can always just use your finger to slide between one work page to the other. This also supports some third party. So this is kind of cool. It's very similar to like multiple desktops open at once. Just tap the plus and you could create more. Now, if you're somebody who does use the Apple Pencil, doesn't matter if it's the Apple Pencil Pro, second generation or first generation, they each have this functionality. In the settings, in the main page, go into accessibility, tap on hover text and go ahead and turn this on. So with hover text selected, whatever the Apple Pencil is highlighting or hovering over, it will show it to you right there. This is super useful when using programs that are so small, in fact, that you may find this to be a useful, powerful tool when it comes to navigating certain things. As you see, it literally hovers over everything and highlights it for me. And if you like to move this square around, you can, because I'm still in the hover text section in the accessibility and display mode, I have it set to top, you can set it to the bottom or in line of the screen. And then if we switch to our finger, the text hovering doesn't appear. And then if you select the Apple Pencil and you have scribbles enabled, if you hit try scribbles this way, whenever you write something and you mess up, instead of backspacing on the keyboard, you could just scribble over it and it'll remove it and delete it like so. It's like always oh, just backtrack like this and now it just removed the, and now it just left us with car. So depending how fast you could write, you might find yourself being faster and more productive using the Apple Pencil. Just scribble over it in case you've messed up somewhere and it will delete. 
Speaking of productivity, the cool thing about the native mail app from Apple is the fact that it's pretty customizable. You see these default icons above here. A lot of people don't know this, but you could always tap these little dots, hit customize toolbar, and you could rearrange them to your personal preference or swap them out with other things like your flag email. You could go ahead and add that if you want to be a part of that. Quickly manage your junk files from here, a quick icon, your unread and read, and your save later. So if you find yourself constantly looking at your junk file, just save it here and it'll quickly take you to it. Now real quick, if you've been enjoying this video so far, if you could take two seconds to hit that like button on like, that would be truly appreciated because of this allows the channel to be driven by you guys, the viewer, which is why you don't see integrated brands for like a sponsorship or a VPN take it up like a minute or two off your time. So thank you to those that hit that like button on like and allow this channel to continue being powered by you guys, the viewers, not brands. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and resume now. And then let's say for example, there's an article, a link or something you'd like to share with somebody, just long hold on the icon and then go into the message app for say, and then just simply drop it in the little text file and you quickly just saved an article right there and you can just hit send. This also works with images as well. So like this image as an example, I could click out of there, go into my notes and just drop it and it saved the image right here. I have the ability to rearrange it or move it around as well as use Apple intelligence to generate a different version of that image as you just witnessed me do right there. This works with files, links, photos, and it's super easy to use. And if you're using the same iCloud account that you like to paste this on your iPhone as an example, that's also paired. I can select copy and then tap paste. It'll automatically paste it from my iPad to my iPhone. It also works on Mac computers as well. Now, if you're somebody who uses the Apple Sport app, which is free to use, by launching the native Apple Sport app, you can monitor your favorite teams all right here off your iPad, including Formula One, NFL, and your leagues. And you can see all the upcoming events. Another cool app that's worth talking about is the podcast app. By launching the native podcast app on Apple, it got a lot better. If you select one of your podcasts that you've been listening to, and we would select it and tap play and click on it, if you're at a place where you can't listen to audio, like your external speakers or you forgot your AirPods or something like that, you can tap this icon down here and we'll let you actually read your podcast right here. And you can tap play and it actually will highlight it. And then of course you could adjust the speed too if you want. So basically you could treat your podcast like a readable book on your iPad. But let's say for example, you like to share your iPad to like a friend and family, but you don't want to give them the whole episode. You just want to start them off at a part where you think it's funny or useful for them. By tapping the three dots, and select share episode, you'll see a setting right here where it says from start. Here, you can select the part that you last left off, tap done, and now you can send it to them. So when they click on that link, it will start them off at the time that you recommended. Now, if you're an individual who uses their iPad rarely, but you like to keep your battery in top healthy order, I highly recommend going into the settings of your iPad and look for the battery tab, which is right here next to your Wi-Fi. And here you could select on battery health. And it'll show you right there the battery capacity, which is kind of impressive along with your cycle count. But I highly recommend double checking and making sure you've selected the 80% limit. This is the reason why my iPad Pro is still on 100% even though I don't often use it compared to my iPad mini. Limiting the iPad to charge only to 80% is good for the battery because you don't want to leave your iPad at 100% while it's not doing anything. It's known to reduce the battery overall longevity. By having this enabled, we'll make sure your iPad is always at a tip top shape in terms of battery health. So definitely make sure you have this enabled. And then if there's an app that you see that it's not on the Apple App Store, don't panic. And if it's like a website you use for work as an example, I'm gonna use my login for my workout meal preps and stuff as an example. So this is Microsoft Excel. By selecting the up arrow icon and you go down, you can select add the home screen right here. Name it whatever you like to name it. I'm just going to leave it like default name for an example. Tap done. And now if we exit out of here, you'll see that we have an app that will take us to Safari and we'll automatically launch that instead of having to go in your bookmark on your iPad Safari page. So if you have like a login for work or something like that, just do that. This way you have an app icon and you can move it around like a normal app or drop it right here in the docs. And then lastly, some of these Apps right here do support widgets. If you simply long hold on an app, you have these little 
widget shortcuts down here where you could tap and it'll automatically transform the widget into that appropriate size. So if you do it to other apps as an example that support this, like the home app, and we select it, you can quickly create widgets like this. And if you like to stack widgets, you could just long hold and move it out of the way and then drop it and then just get out of that. And now you see we have created a stackable widget. And if you like to reverse the process, that's easy. It's simply just long holding and select remove stack and it goes away. So there we have it. Those are 15 of my favorite tips and tricks that you can do on any latest generation iPad, so long as it's on the latest version of iPad OS. Let me know in the comment section which one of these was your favorite. And if I missed one and you'd like to recommend for everybody else, feel free to comment down below for the rest of us. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you wish to watch more, check out this video over there where I go through all the cool hidden features on Apple CarPlay, including a clever way to disable the auto playability when you get inside your car. You know, when Apple CarPlay connects and automatically starts resuming whatever audio file you're listening to, I'd show you a clever way to disable that. Thank you so much for watching.